Standings then after round two. This is round three. Barry Stanley and Chris Palmer, surprise leaders as a result of that shunt between Dunlop and Rob Orme. So they have the top six. 35 125s go, and something of a torrid practice session yesterday meant that some people are quite well down the order. But that's the front row. Alan Patterson, Jimmy Brown from Bidolf is there in pole position, having elected to start just out from the inside. Cox, McGee, and Pomfret. Relatively new names to all of us. Mike Pomfret there from Crew, fifth fastest. So, pole position man then, Jimmy Brown, screeches away, a cracking start for him, and he's first into Paddock. So, number 11, Jimmy Brown, puts his nose in front. Right with it was Rob Orme coming through from the third row. So, Rob Orme, a good start from the third row, alongside me after a fairly hectic ninth place, and Alan Patterson trailing his exhaust pipe. Number six, Alan Patterson has the exhaust pipe coming adrift. Alongside me, as I was about to say, Roger Burnett from ninth place in the 750s. Patterson's race won't be lasting very long, will it? I tend to think that he'll not be able to continue. The exhaust there was hanging down from this single cylinder machine. They only have one exhaust pipe, and it's not like he could really do without it at all, so I'm sure we'll see him retire. Well, that's an upset, because Alan Patterson has just returned from six weeks in Europe where he's been scrapping in the Grand Prix. He's, there it is, there's the complete exhaust pipe trailing from the back end of that Honda. Apart from anything else, not a little dangerous, Roger. Absolutely. Um, if it just happens to hook up under the back wheel there, you can see it's alongside the back wheel. Could cause him to skid, lose control um, and crash. So we'll just have to watch out for that. This is through the chicane, a right and a ooh, lift in the front wheel. A right and a left flick there. It doesn't seem to be any danger. It's the left hand turns where it will be the most of a problem, as this one is here. Um, I really can't see that staying there for the rest of the race. Well, let me ask you the question, Roger. Will Alan Patterson hear that thing clattering away on the road? Because it must be making all sorts of a noise. He will hear it clattering away, and I'm sure that the stewards, if it's seen and reported, will black flag him. And just as I say that, we do see the black flag coming out. I'm sure that will be for Patterson. Well, as Patterson gets the black flag back to the race itself, and out in front goes Robert Dunlop from Ballymoney. So the green 125 Honda of Dunlop that's got his nose in front. Then it's number nine, Steve Thompson. Steve Thompson was going particularly well at Donington until he fell off at the Melbourne hairpin. So Steve Thompson having another great ride here at Brands Hatch in pursuit. There's the offending exhaust pipe having shaken itself loose from Alan Patterson's machine. Will he now be allowed to continue the race? This will be very interesting. I doubt if the officials on the start line actually know that it, the, the exhaust has parted company with the machine. They'll be intent on stopping him, and there we have it. He's already stopped, so... Well, the pictures tell the story, so a very sad Alan Patterson will return to the paddock. The bike obviously a little bit out of tune apart from anything else, but it didn't seem to affect it in the early stages. Meanwhile, at the front, it's the old firm back in action. Robert Dunlop, number four, is leading Rob Orme, who was up here just a few minutes ago talking us through the 750cc race. Orme made it no secret that it's daggers drawn between the, these two. Whilst there's no hard feeling, they are each out to win the 125cc Shell Super Cup. Steve Thompson there in third place, number nine. So these five 125s now stretching the gap down towards clearways. Well, Roger, a good start to the 125s, a bit of drama, but I think we're in for a good scrap between the leading duo. Yes, the 125s always prove to be uh, very exciting in close racing, and although these are a little bit strung out at the moment, I'm sure that in a few laps we'll see them actually bunch back up together. Robert Dunlop, of course, is riding, nursing that broken or plated collarbone that he sustained at Donington Park. He survived the Isle of Man TT with it, but this... This circuit is very, very demanding. We don't use the Grand Prix circuit here at Brands Hatch very often, um, but I've just done 15 laps around here, and really, very, really is physically demanding, throwing the machine from right to left. So I just hope that uh, that's not going to prove too much of a problem for Robert. Well, pole position man number 11, Jimmy Brown, is in a very good fourth place and challenging Steve Thompson, number nine, ahead of him, whilst from behind is coming a concerted effort from number 22, that's George Bedford, from Burton on Trent. So Bedford now is in fifth and going well, but 
Roger mentioned Robert Dunlop and the Isle of Man. Let me just tell you that Robert Dunlop, complete with broken collarbone, won the 125 and the junior TT in the Isle of Man. A magnificent effort, and he was well placed on the Norton in the big race, but had to retire because he found it so physically demanding. But a double TT win for Robert Dunlop. A great battle going on for third, fourth, and fifth. Number nine is Steve Thompson. Number 11, just being forced wide, is Jimmy Brown, the pole position man. And forcing through number 22 is George Bedford. There is just a little hint of rain. The clouds have come over, everybody's on slicks. It is just beginning to spit with rain. At what point, Roger, will the officials take that seriously? Of course, the 125cc machines are the lower powered machines. Um, the fact that they're on slicks obviously does cause concern if it does start to rain. It would have to rain quite drastically, I think, um, for them to need to want to change tyres onto the rain tyres. So I would suggest unless it rains quite badly or severely, the, then the officials will let the race run. On lap four, still this battle for third, fourth and fifth, because out in front, you're watching them now, it's Robert Dunlop and Rob Orr, and they are leaving these three pretty well in their wake. Bedford is now up to third, so George Bedford, a fighting third place, having come, and I'm looking frantically from a grid position, Bedford came through sixth fastest qualifier from the second row. This is the race leader, number four, Robert Dunlop. Alongside him, or just with him now, number two, Rob Orm on the Team Mobile One Honda. Nick Coleman, the team manager, quite excited about the performance of Rob Orm in the team. There's Patterson's bike without his exhaust system being wheeled back to the pits. Patterson is one of the better 125 riders, and it would have been nice to have seen him up with these two, and it would perhaps have then have been a three way scrap. But Rob Orm uh, is particularly good on the 125 machines. That's not taking anything away from Robert Dunlop. Um, Rob Orm knows the circuit very well indeed. Um, and if my money were to go on either of these two at this stage, Barry, it would be Rob Orm. Well, what we don't want to see from Rob Orm is a serious dash up the inside, a last ditch stand before the start finish, bringing them both down again to repeat what happened at Donington. But there you have the top six. And number 19, Chris Palmer from Carlisle, has really come into the frame on 125s this year. He's in sixth place and closing. He is only 3.29 seconds down on the man ahead of him. So they're very, very close, the rest of the field. The leading duo, though, and look at Rob Orme pulling out of the slipstream now, right in the wheel tracks of Robert Dunlop as they come out of Graham Hill Bend, along Cooper Strait, up towards Surtees, and there's a great big hole at the inside, but Rob Orme is quite content to follow him round, and maybe, and bearing in mind, he was up here watching the 750 action, and we had a wonderful bird's eye view of where Rob McElnay passed Haslam. It could be that Rob Orme has learned from that. He won't want to push the, the pace at, at this stage of the race. Having said that, we just see on the monitor there that he does um, hold the fastest lap of the race so far. But he won't want to push the pace. If he were to pass Robert Dunlop, then it would only increase um, their lap times and their risk of crashing. And really, the, the idea is to win at the slowest possible speed. So I figure that he'll sit behind Robert, perhaps surprise him maybe with two or three laps to go. Um, I don't think he'll leave it to the last lap. Quick rundown after the top six. We've got Steve Palmer there in sixth place. 27 McGee, then 23 it's Collinson. David Fabian, number 55. On the brand new team bike, which has been sponsored by an ice cream millionaire, would you believe, is sitting there in ninth place. Those are the top six, and nothing under 10 seconds separating the top six, so still wide open, really, this 1-2-5 race. Orm and Dunlop, however, really getting stuck in, and they are currently sitting in third, fourth, and third and fifth places in the championship table. Robert Dunlop, a little bit puzzled because he's won one round, and in his mind, he also won the Donington round had he not been swept off his feet. And he's in third place in the championship on 20 points. Rob Orm is on 17 points. So if Orm can only just get his little Honda past that of Robert Dunlop, then they will be equal on points. 
Barry Stanley and Chris Palmer, who are out in front in the title chase at the moment, are not in the big points. Dunlop and Orm right with him again. So these two now really have pulled away, trying desperately, I presume, not get to get in each other's way. Yes, uh, every bike in the race but one is a Honda. Uh, what's interesting is that Rob Orm seems to be holding a tighter line than Robert Dunlop round the majority of the corners. This part here is very tricky. That's the new chicane. The majority of the riders won't have ridden on the full Grand Prix circuit for... I certainly haven't ridden here since 1985. So perhaps many of the riders won't have ridden on it at all. And there are two tricky parts. One is the chicane we've just seen. It's a blind entry. The second is coming into clearways now. You see, Robert Dunlop keeps into the middle of the road. That's to avoid the rubber that's laid from the cars on the on the racing line, which, as we look at the screen, is over to the right-hand side. But that was quite interesting, and that may be a tactic that will block Rob Orm from making the very move that uh, you described that Rob McElnay made with Ron Haslam uh, on clearways on the last lap. You mentioned, Roger, the, uh, the big circuit, and you've not ridden here for a number of years. The surface, of course, will be different because it hasn't been used that often. Is it difficult coming from, from the old track onto the new bit? I mean, is, is there a difference in the grip on the circuit? Yes, the new, well, not the new part, but the Grand Prix part of the, the circuit is, has much better grip than um, the much used Indy circuit, as it's called, the very short circuit. This is the point where the bikes go out onto the main um, long straight onto the Grand Prix track. From there on, all the way right back round to Clearways Corner, the grip, I would say, is perhaps 25% better than the Indy circuit. Well, that'll be interesting if rain does start, start to come down with any degree of seriousness, because that will mean that coming into Clearways, the riders will effectively step onto a skating rink, I suspect. Yes, in fact, we had wet practice yesterday, and um, the conditions caught quite a few riders out. And, in fact, coming into Clearways was perhaps the most treacherous part, as Robert Dunlop really spectacular through that chicane. As I said, that is a, is a blind uphill entry to the chic that chicane, and very difficult to judge indeed. Away they come, then, down towards Clearways. 110 miles an hour round this right-hander, the start-finish area in sight again, and nothing between these two. Little Hondas, identical. The riders, too, pretty much the same in size, stature, and weight. And Rob Orm is on the inside at Paddock Hill Bend, but no, longer on the brakes, it's Dunlop. He's had Mr Orm going up the inside before and has got a sore collarbone to prove it. Three weeks ago that happened, and he's riding very, very hard here at Brands Hatch, doesn't want to repeat performance. Druids down Graham Hill, towards Graham Hill Bend, the adverse camber. Two-thirds race distance now run here at Brands in round three of the 125cc Shell Super Cup. Quite openly regarded now as the most prestigious event in the UK by the riders. Everyone focuses on the Super Cup. They see it as the major series to such an extent that those who could be abroad on Grand Prix duty really don't see the point. They'd rather be at home here, getting the exposure in front of television and the home crowds. And the sport has had a tremendous uplift due to Shell Oil's involvement over the last three years. Dunlop then, Rob Orm number two, still with him, and the gap very much the same, just three bike lengths as they drop away Anchoring it hard round the right-hander through the chicane again, just picking up the front wheel over that little rise that Roger Burnett talked about. The left-hander of Sterling's, 80 miles an hour through here, into fourth gear, down the drop, up one more gear, into clearways again to complete lap eight. And I really don't think, Roger, looking at it, that Rob Orm has much of an answer. He might try the overtaking move at the end of the straight again, but it's anybody's race. Yeah, he's in Robert Dunlop's slipstream now. This is an ideal position for him to go up the inside, not that lap, though, into Paddock Bend. Robert Dunlop has a very wide line into Paddock there, and I think that looks to me like the place that um, Rob Orm could actually make the manoeuvre. Um, it would all start, of course, by coming into Clearways Bend. As I mentioned before, Robert Dunlop has the middle of the road line through there, which doesn't help his exit speed onto the start and finish straight. And I think that's where Rob Orm can gain. 
Race leader then, as Ro race leader changes as Rob Orm goes through to take the lead. So number two, 27 years of age, Rob Orm from West Hallam in Derbyshire, now leads round three of the 125cc Super Cup here at Brands. But Robert Dunwell has by no means given up. He's fighting back and he's got his nose in front again and he's staying there. So tucking down behind the Perspex bubble, Robert Dunlop, a diminutive rider, but he's exactly the right build. Quite how he wrestles with the Norton is a bit of a mystery to me. He found it particularly difficult at the Isle of Man TT. Um, for the viewers, the Isle of Man TT is 37 and three quarter miles of closed roads, and um, going uphill and downhill and over bumps and really between hedges and brick walls, so quite a dangerous circuit uh, and very difficult to wrestle a machine, much different to here at Brands Hatch. And once again down towards Clearways, and it would be interesting this lap again to see if Rob Orm can overtake. His best chance here is to get a good drive as Robert Dunlop runs wide, and all the time he slightly gains on Robert as we come through over the start and finish line. But again, not close enough that lap. Well, tail enders ahead of them, numbers 49, Ian Hughes from Liverpool, and 54, Steve Dowie of Reading, about to have the fright of their lives as Robert Dunlop and Rob, Rob Orm respectively go through. Both of them, a look over the left shoulder there from Dowie, and now over the right, but they've been well and truly lapped. The race leader then, still Robert Dunlop, number four, on the Jay Kennedy plant hire Honda from Ballymoney. Rob Orm from Derbyshire, six times a British champion in 250, 350 production and in 125s. A wealth of experience. Never, though, and I suspect that's due to his size, never really has put his leg over anything bigger. It must be very difficult, Roger. We talk about Rob, Robert Dunlop, but you have to be, I presume, a sensible size to ride a big bike. Um, I think you have to be a sensible size to ride a small bike. I think that's probably more difficult. A big guy on a small bike makes the bike go slower. They're, they're single-cylinder 125s, these, with perhaps about 50 horsepower. Um, and the heavier you are, the, obviously, the slower the bike goes. On the bigger bike, a, a lighter rider will make the bike go very fast, but uh, will, it will make it difficult for the rider to control because you need a certain amount of leverage to throw over 165 kilos of of solid mass from right to left and to hang on to it during the 150 horsepower acceleration that it gives. And just as I talk now, I think Rob Orm's about to make his move. Dunlop very good on the brakes again. That wide line, which Roger pointed out, is enough to deny Rob Orm the opportunity of slipping through there. So Dunlop still hanging on to this fragile lead here at Brands. The question is whether he can retain it all the way to the chequered flag or not. And we're not too far away from that moment now. So into Graham Hill bend again, along Cooper Strait and Rob Orm again, still tucked in the slipstream. And you can see there for yourself just how quickly they're going. They are just seven seconds off a 100 mile an hour lap. So that is amazing. The speed and power developed by these little 125s, quite incredible. Orm as close as he's ever been in the last couple of laps again. He's on the inside, but still there's no way through. 30 years of age, Robert Dunlop riding with all the sense and maturity that his years of pure road racing have given him. Winner of the Northwest 200 for the second time this year. A triple 125cc. TT win for him and his first win and probably the most important of all for him lifting the junior race this year on the same Ray Carl's Yamaha in fact which Ian Locker took to victory in last year's junior TT so obviously something special about the bike but something equally special about the way Robert Dunlop rode it with a broken collarbone out of clear ways again and I'm going to preempt what Rob Orm's going to do. He moves out of the slipstream, but no, Dunlop is so good on the brakes. He's absolutely dynamic on the brakes going into Paddock Hill Bend. There's just no way for Rob Orm. He's going to have to do it this time, Roger, if at all. This is the last lap, so it's going to be very exciting now. Rob Orm won't want to, to lose this race. Um, by the same token, Robert Dunlop won't want to lose it either. 
maybe um, this this next manoeuvre at Surtees, which where he passed Robert Dunlop before, may come into play, but Robert Dunlop actually blocks that, so uh, it's really anybody's guess what's going to happen now as they go out on down to Pilgrim's Drop. It's very difficult from now until the finish to actually overtake, so uh, perhaps he's lost his chance. On the fastest part of the circuit now, heads, elbows, knees all tucked in to get the maximum speed and minimum draft down there. Rob Orb is now three lengths away. I suspect there'll be a little bid at the chicane. Let's hope it's not too aggressive a bid. They're on Westfield Bend now, rounding the top, dropping down towards Dingle Dell and the little chicane. There it is, they flick it through, and a whole gaggle of tail-enders ahead of them. This could really open up the race. Robert Dunlop will have to ride very, very cannily indeed to avoid Rob Orn from sneaking through and cashing in on these tail-enders. But they've all moved out of the way. They've done the gentlemanly thing now for these two. Rob Orn sweeping round in the slipstream of Robert Dunlop, but it's not to be. Number four, Robert Dunlop, is going to lift this one. He's breaking the toe. Rob Orn, some six lengths adrift, collects second. And George Bedford, number 22, a little bit forgotten, some seven seconds adrift, but a magnificent third. But there is your winner, Robert Dunlop. He appears to be the quickest 125 man around at the moment. Well, that was Robert Dunlop's second victory of the season. He won the first race at Snetterton. Rob Orme finished second then, and today. George Bedford uh, finishing in third place today. As for the overall situation after three rounds, well, Robert Dunlop has a 15-point lead over Barry Stanley, uh, a five-point lead, I'm sorry, over uh, Barry Stanley and Chris Palmer. They were lying first and second in the championship before today's race.